Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. Notoriously known as the most depressing day of the year, Blue Monday lived up to its full potential here in Lloydminster with deep freeze temperatures and a wind chill hovering at near minus 30. But some found interesting ways to beat the blues. Bart Patiasek reports. With coffee and donuts in hand, Lloyd FM's Heather Clagus made her way in the frigid cold to bring some cheer to some local businesses. All this on what some call the most depressing day of the year. As scientists have done this study and they came up with this formula and it had to do with uh, how far along it was into winter, how cold it is, the fact that you've uh, probably broken your New Year's New Year's resolution by now, also the fact that you've had to pay off all your Christmas bills, and it all adds up and comes down to making this Monday the most depressing day of the year. For the staff, the gesture was appreciated. If anything, it was a good break to take their minds off winter troubles. We always hear about the negative on stuff, and it's nice to see positive come to our side sometimes too, because we need to cheer up on the day sometimes. Staff at the dealership are not only dealing with your standard winter blues, but one family's struggle is weighing heavily on their mind. Everybody in the, that knows someone knows that someone that's been sick. Uh, we've had an issue with one of our staff that his son actually took quite ill. Um, got a heck of a surprise call when they went, took him to the hospital and they said, we need to rush you to the children's hospital in Edmonton because you've got problems. Lloyd FM was tipped off about what the staff were going through by Flora's own wife. Her email was very creative. She took the song Blue Christmas and reworked it a little bit to be Blue Monday. So uh, she explained uh, just that they could really use uh, a pick-me-up here at Boundary Ford. So we thought, you know what, why not? Let's stop here today. Heather and the rest of Lloyd FM stopped at a few more places over the afternoon. I just hope that we've helped brighten up a few people's Blue Mondays and maybe next year it won't be the most depressing day of the year. Bart Podiasek. New News. Family Literacy Day is underway across Canada on January 27th. Mounties have arrested a woman for allegedly pinning her husband between a truck and a steel railing. Lloydminster RCMP say the 34-year-old man was found stuck between the vehicle and the parking lot railing outside a business. The man was taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police have charged his 24-year-old spouse with impaired driving, causing bodily harm, and obstructing a police officer. Meantime, Saskatchewan police officers now have another tool at their disposal. Today, the police commission approved the use of tasers by municipal officers. After a review that started back in 2007, the Saskatchewan Police Commission decided that individual officers, not only police from tactical teams, can use the devices. The commission says there will be strict controls, however, including a review each time a taser is used. Tasers fire a jolt of electricity that can incapacitate a person and are used by some police forces to deal with violent suspects. The commission says officers would have to be trained and certified to carry the weapon, which has been linked to more than 25 deaths in Canada. The Saskatchewan Federation of Police Officers, which represents more than 1,200 officers, says it's very happy tasers have been approved. Well, a string of shootings in the United States has sparked a gun control debate, and it's even making its way north of the border. With the recent gun show in the border city this past weekend, Bar Asik caught up with vendors to find out what role the debate is playing here. There is no law or set of laws that can prevent every senseless act of violence completely. No piece of legislation that will prevent every tragedy, every act of evil. If there is even one thing we can do, to reduce this violence. If there's even one life that can be saved, then we've got an obligation to try. President Barack Obama spoke about a proposed gun law he's hoping to pass through Congress. After recent shootings in Newtown, Aurora, and other cities and towns, restricting access to guns is a hot topic south of the border. And here in the border city, with some fearing gun bans, certain models have become hot commodities. Uh, because of uh some of the coincidences going on down in the states. Uh, one of the things going on is that the government does want to ban all black firearms. So guys are definitely buying them up a lot more because they're scared that sooner or later you're not going to be able to buy them. In Canada, all automatic weapons are illegal for the public to buy. 
Only rifles and semi-automatics can be sold as unrestricted weapons. Certain tactical guns are restricted to law enforcement and others, but what that means is up to the feds. For example, this one here is not restricted, depending on how it looks. You get an AR-15, they're restricted. You get this JRC, just right carbine, 45, not restricted. Really depends on where the government puts it in what category. Restricted guns are under heavy laws in Canada and can only be used at approved shooting ranges. Handguns are included. It's not easy to get your hands on one. First of all, you have to get your restricted license after you get your non-restricted, and then you will have to be a member of a pistol club also, and we'll have to register it, and then you have to get your ATT to pick it up, your authorization to transport. After that, you can only travel from your home to your registered firing range. Even stopping for gas can get you in trouble with the law. As for getting a gun license, there are many steps to take. You definitely got to go take your course and then they of course do a background check. There's a few references that they have to phone, make sure, okay, this guy isn't a loony, you know what I mean. And uh, it takes about six weeks up to three months to get your PAL in the mail. And then once you get your PAL, you have to renew it every five years. A practical test is also necessary to get your license. As for the vendors we spoke to, many didn't want to comment about the shootings in the states instead focused on local safety and licenses. Bart Pityasek, New Cap News.